So Aussie USD. So we've had we've had look two or three days of massive massive Aussie or um, US dollar um, weakness. Okay, so we've had um, the announcement that come out and US dollar just shit the bed and the phrase any other words wouldn't wouldn't really wouldn't really do it so we had a double top there from that point and look we've asked for having a little bit of of dollar sort of come back it's after coming back it's after coming into this area it's after hitting it's after hitting its head and now it's turned around now it was there a trade there yes there was would it have been something that I wouldn't have taken probably not yes this move has been absolutely huge. This move here has been has been unbelievable. In the sense of a currency that's three point three percent in two days, which is which is a huge move on a currency as big as the US dollar. So yeah, we're we're, we're going to see some sort of a pullback. Now, how far is it going to pull back? I don't know. I don't know. And um, has the has the landscape changed much from here? Not really. Not really. But we have had a little bit of a pullback already. So it'll be interesting to see whether this is this is going to come the whole way back. Uh, I wanted to come back somewhere around here, and if it comes back around here, then yes, I'll potentially look at it as a buy here. But at this present moment, I'm not looking at this. You could potentially look at this at a four hour. And go well look here there's the phase one this is the phase two and now we're looking at the next movement okay you could say that and that may happen absolutely it may happen but there's no real indicators here for me to say that that's the area we have historical little levels back here but nothing massively that jumps out at us Actually, probably about there is the is the best one. Let me put that in there. So again, if the four hour comes back to there, that could be a level for us to jump in and actually buy it again. But it's not something that's at this present moment. Coming down, shorting it here is not something I'm looking at. When it comes to here, this could be something that I'm looking at in the sense that I'd expect dollar to continue with this weakness. We'll be interested to see what's, what happens in the market, whether it's going to bounce here and then go, or whether it's going to continue coming back. Or maybe tomorrow is just a buying day. That could happen as well. Euro USD. So Euro USD hasn't had that little pullback yet. It's had one, two, three, four days of just that buying power. Had that little high test up there. Not massive levels up there. But it'll be interesting to see will that come back into sort of this area because we sort of do need this to slow down a little bit we do need this to slow down a little bit so from here nearly four percent euro has got four percent stronger now if you're changing exchanging currency that's really, really good for you. In the sense that your dollar, your euro gets more dollars for you. But if you're someone who is who is who's just trading this and you've missed that whole movement, we need a pullback. We need a pullback into a level that we're happy to we're happy to jump in on. So we needed to come back into one of these areas. Now am I happy to short that? Absolutely not. Am I looking at as a good place to come down to? No, not at all. I don't think it's a great area. It's not something I'm looking at. No, not at all. Just bear with me for a second. So 
So is that something I would wait on? Yes. Would I trade that down today? No, because tomorrow could be another buying day again. Euro could continue with its strength against US dollar. Or more to the point, US dollar could continue with its weakness. DBP USD. Uh, similarly here, it has popped up. Let me actually put a level in there. Delete. One, two, three. A touch there as well. Sort of four. Question again is, is how far does that come back to? And I will assume there. I'll actually pull that up. Get rid of this. Okay, so we have a couple of bounces here, a couple here, another one there, another one there. So ideally, we want that to come back to there, don't we? Want that to come back to there, and if it hits there, that's where we're looking for it to take off to the upside. We're looking for the momentum. We're looking for what's going on. We're looking for the hit, that sort of area. GBP CHF. The USD CHF, again, similarly, we just had massive sell off on the likes of this. Unfortunately, on the daily, there's absolutely nothing here for me to actually go off of. There was a little spike here, no one there. But again, we've had four or five percent move between three and five percent move down here against US dollar. This this will turn around. At some point, the question is how far? I've no idea. How far? I've no idea. You'd expect it to sort of come back into that level there. And then you'd, you'd expect the next sort of sell-off. This one was a little more predictable in the sense that it had come back into this area. Bring it down a fraction. So to there. Now again, how far is it going to pull back? I don't know. I don't know. But you'd expect it to sort of come back down into there somewhere. That's the previous resistance support. And then you'd expect the next buyers to come in. When US dollar is weak, we expect stocks and crypto to pick up. Um, stocks, maybe. Gold is generally the, the, the usual hedge for, for the likes of for the likes of US dollar. Um, crypto, not so much, but there will be some people jumping in there. But the idea is, is that once a market starts to move, people jump on the bandwagon. So we have XRP that's after starting to move, which means people are getting excited again. And if XRP continues to move, that will get people talking about crypto in general, which means then we'll create a buzz, so on and so forth. So it's a sort of self-fulfilling prophecy. So yes, it could be, but not historically. Historically, it's gold.
JPY. And again, we have a little bit of a level here, expecting a little bit of US dollar strength here against, against JPY or JPY weakness. We would like to actually see a bit of JPY weakness here because uh, we do have a trade on some of the other ones. So getting rid of some of that stuff. Okay, so it's come back down, hit that sort of one, two, three, and then we have that sort of, what would I call it, engulfing bar there. I'm looking to trade that again. No, absolutely not. Do I think this is the next wave of US dollar strength? No. This could massively start moving sideways. USD CAD. And it's funnily enough that CAD is the weakest currency out there at the minute. And as you can see by the by the bar that we've had here on, on US dollar, it engulfs this. Yes, and um, JPY had an engulfing bar as well. But look at the wick at the bottom and the, and the top. It was trying to continue. Whereas here, US dollar is actually got stronger than CAD here on, on Friday. So USD CAD is definitely not something we should be trading. So the two weakest currencies out there so far is CAD and US dollar. Um, and it's probably US dollar and then CAD and then JPY. Euro GBP, and um, look, this is flat as a pancake, hasn't really gone anywhere. Um, Euro has had its weakness, but in the last one, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days, this has moved nowhere. So it's definitely not something I'd be looking to trade. Euro CHF, and we had a pullback into this area. We wanted, we wanted it to bounce here. We wanted it to come back to this level. Now the problem is, is that we've we've had two big bars come back there. I would have liked to have three medium bars rather than two big ones, but unfortunately we've been given what we've been given. Now, if you expect the overall momentum to continue going down, you've looked at it as one, two, three, it's a triple bottom, it's went up and hit its head, then you have to jump down to the smaller time frame because if you're looking for a trade here short, the entry is there, stop loss is there, and it's just it's just too big. It's just too big of a bar, okay? So it doesn't doesn't meet the criteria. So if we drop down, say, to the four hour, we have an entry there. Now, the question is now, is it's a, it's a pretty small bar now. So then you have the opposite sort of happening. You have the opposite happening that it's, that it's now a too small bar. I'd look to be out before before that low there, or at least trail my stop loss. And then if I got quite close to it there, drag it down and just see where it goes. But at this present moment in time, there's a 1.41 to there. Is it the best trade in the world? Um, no. But on the daily, we wanted this to happen, and it played out exactly how we wanted it to happen. The question is now, is Euro going to continue with its weakness, or is CHF going to continue with its strength? So either of those things happen, this will continue to go down and hit profit. But if Euro gets stronger or CHF gets weaker, you could be triggered in and then triggered out from this trade quite quickly. Euro CADs, and look, this tells you how weak CAD is, not even, not even stopping. CAD is just CAD is just continuing with its movement. This bar is too far, it's gone too far, it's not something we should be looking at. Euro Aussie, sideways, flat as a pancake again, not something we should be looking at. Now you could suggest that Euro NZD has hit a double bottom here and a potential pop to the upside. You could argue that, but again, it's a, it's a sideways market. So is this a high probability play? And the answer is that is absolutely not. This is not a high probability play. So for that reason, like the Dragons then, I am out. Euro JPY. So we talked about this on uh, Thursday's webinar. And 
anyone who took this, well done. At the minute, you are 0.75 of cents up. Well done. So on this, there's a target of two to one. And I don't see any reason for this to sort of turn around. So I fully expect this to go on and sort of hit our two to one, or at least hit a double top. Shane, you got stopped out. Your stop loss was too tight. Uh, I assume you, you mean you moved it here and got stopped out on, on this bar here. We're trailing it. Um, unlucky. It's may want to look at your, your managing your managing your trades um, setups. Yeah, I can understand that completely. Um, let me have a look. Went up, hold back. Um, if I'm being honest, Shane, shouldn't really have been triggered out of that trade. It didn't go far enough into our into our one to one, and then went again. Um, but if you still think this is room to go, it may pull back. Well, I say it may. I'd expect it to pull back to somewhere around here. And if it pulls back somewhere around here, there is a smaller time frame entry again on this. If we're expecting it to go, but I do expect that I can't. I don't see anything coming out in on uh, the Japanese yen at the minute, or even for the last three or four months, to suggest that it's not going to continue. Yeah, and if something like that does pop up, um, I know Tyson's the only one that pops up in the group. But guys, if something like that pops up, stick in the group. Don't be, don't be waiting on Tyson or me or Arno or someone to stick stuff in. Don't be afraid. Also, if uh, if we put something in the group, guys, have an opinion on it. Even even if it's absolute pure bollocks, have an opinion on it. Say what you think. That's what it's there for. It's there for as a community to chat. And yes, you someone might say, "Oh, that's that's crap." I, I disagree, but I highly doubt it. Or someone go, well, "It's a valid point, but I disagree because of this, this, and this." Okay. Uh, GBP CHF uh, need that to sort of pull back into here again. Let me just get this one. So that's the potential area there, but again, it's it wouldn't be it wouldn't be something that I'm looking to trade. This is moving sideways. We have two clear cycles to the downside. If it hits here, yeah, there's a potential trade, but I'd be looking to get out of it at that level there. The points, one points, one, one, five, four. That's where I'd be looking to jump out. Um, GBP Aussie. And again, we talked about this trade here coming back down. It didn't quite double bottom. I know some of you guys were, were looking at that trade, but if you take, it didn't quite double bottom here. So it wasn't a trade that I would look to take. But again, I'm still in this one. This one is still running. I understand that if you manage your trade correctly, you would have potentially um, taken 0.65% out of it, or maybe a little bit more. Or maybe you're someone who thinks that this is going to continue and you've sat through all this either or. But there is a potential, another trade there on this one, if you think stop loss here, entry there. Now, is your stop loss safe? Nope. In my opinion, a stop loss should be down where this one is, below here. But it depends whether you're looking for risk to reward or you're looking for just for something to take. So it depends on what your, what your outlook on this is. GBP, JPY. So out of the two, this is the one that I took, GBP, JPY, um, rather than Euro, JPY. Hindsight is telling me that Euro, JPY was a far better trade, but it is what it is. Looking on the facts, we assess that GBP was stronger and looked like it was going to continue with its, with its strength. But as we can see, we're literally at break even at this present moment in time. Anyone that took this one. Um, but again, Look, if I have a loss on it, I'm happy not to have a loss on it. 
If not, then it will go on and we'll take some profit out of it. But the idea here is it meets the rules. It's had a nice pullback. It's come back to this double bottom. Overall momentum's up. Everything still indicates that this should continue. GBP NZD. Uh, and here we have come back to this little double bottom here. Uh, there is a potential trade there long. But again, it's very similar to Aussie NZD. Do you keep your stop loss here below this double bottom or do you have it slightly higher? Again, is it a high probability trade? Not massively. I want to have my take profit there. There's a 1.47 to 1 in it. If, if it plays out like that, it looks like here that NZD is looking to get stronger. These highs are failing to get higher. And these lows are sort of failing to make higher highs, aren't they? These lows are, are failing to make higher lows. It's this is slightly higher. So it's it's telling me that this is potentially trying to topple over. So we may see a bit of sideways movement here and continue or up to the downside. GBP CAD, and look, we have this massive run on GBP CAD. It's massively overextended. It's not something I would look to be trading. Um, let me have a look here historically. Because I want to stick a level in there. And that just looks like a better level all round. Sticking it in there. Couple of touches here, you know, a couple of touches there, a couple of here, a couple there. And there's a few in here as well. Two touches. But again, yes, I understand that we've loads of breaks here. Absolutely, we've smashing through this level. Um, but we are sitting on that ceiling at the moment. Would I be looking to place that short? No, not at all. Don't, I don't see CAD being strong enough to turn this around. Or if it does, maybe one, maybe two bar return maximum. But if it came back to there, that's where we'd be looking to jump in. That's where we'd be looking for this to go. That's what we'd be looking to do. So in that area. Aussie NZD. Um, we looked at this overall momentum. We have a phase one, phase two, phase one, phase two. The problem is this was a pretty big bar. This is a pretty big bar to be taken. Um, and on this, we only have a 1.71 target on this. At this minute, you're probably 0.4 up, are we? We're point, we're point six up actually. Um, point six up. And it took that well done. If you'd have jumped down to the smaller time frame and take it, you would have had a much better entry here. Well done on that. But I know most people didn't see it on the four hour. But this is flying at the moment. Let's hope that continues and gets down somewhere into this area here. Aussie CAD. Again, we've had a sort of little pullback here. Um, we've had this sort of inside bar, so to speak. Had a little pullback, then we had the buying power, and then we had this little little pullback here again. So seems to be a little bit of a little bit of pressure holding that there at that sort of level. And if we look, we have a touch here, touch here, and then another touch here. Okay, so. The question, I suppose, is, is that, is that valid, that level? Is it something we should be using? Or is it this going to continue? Um, again, is it a high probability trade? No. Is it a serious enough level? Yes. Um, we also talk about Aussie CHF. This potentially being a reversal again, it wasn't a high probability trade. It was one, two, three, four touches. And um, 
and you would have been triggered in here on this this second bar here and in this particular scenario you what point point eight of a percent down at the moment but again it wouldn't have been something that we would have taken but there was still a trade there overall but it got triggered in on this one if this breaks and then retests that's where we're looking to get in if this retests we want to break retest of this and then that will be a pretty good signal to the downside okay so very very similar to um gbp jpy euro jpy this one here had already happened and um, before I saw it on Thursday, this one already happened. It was a little bit late to get into this position. And there's where we were. It went up as far as a 0.81. Big profit is there is a 2.4 in this particular scenario. So it has turned around. Um, yes, we have had a, a little bit of a buying or a selling day on Friday. Um, it'll be interesting to see whether Aussie continues with a little bit of strength. Back down for the four hour. And the problem is, is there's no real levels. There's no real levels for us to be looking at some sort of a bounce off of. Is that there good enough? I can't imagine many people looking at this level and going, yeah, that, that's a key level. Yeah, I want to get in on the four hour there. Um, I suppose the most recent one there is that there's a double bottom. And if it comes back to there, then absolutely maybe it comes back to there. Look for a little bounce to the upside. Would be interesting to see that there. CHF JPY. Anyone that took that there, it's flying at the moment. Well done. Did it come back to there? No, it didn't. But you probably could make that fit if I wanted. That's the problem with trading. It's never, it's never, it's always subjective. Look, I've just made that trend line fit there. And um, it came back quite nicely. Had a nice little low test there and popped up. It's popped up to this sort of double bottom. But CHF is one of the stronger currencies at the minute. So you'd expect this to continue going. Um, it'll be interesting to see those JPY continuous weakness. If it continues, then you'd expect this to go on to be a winner. Add JPY. Um, we did talk about this here at this particular point. There is a trade there. There's still a trade there. Is it something I would take? No. We're we're backing the weakest currency out there or the second weakest currency out there, JPR CAD, versus the third weakest currency, which is JPY. So of course it's US dollar. Then we have uh, then we have CAD, then we have JPY. So when drawing the upward and downward trend lines, do you on the analysis, do you use the wicks or do you do bodies? So the idea with this is line of best fit. So I have I've cut off half a wick here. I'm on the bottom of the wick here, on the bottom of the wick here, but I'm on the body of the candle here. So line of best fit. So whatever way you can make it fit best. I could even I could even put that there, off the body, off the body, off the wick, off the body, and that and that's the problem with the likes of trend lines and horizontals. There's there's subjective, 
there's objectives, there's zones, there are areas, there are sort of guidelines. That's the, that's the thing with them. And that's why sometimes they're so hard for people to see and see people to work off because people want exact science. Unfortunately, trading is never an exact science. But at this particular moment in time, that is there. Would I be looking at a CAD JPY? No, not at all. And this is an example why CAD, look at it, it's just absolutely capitulated. Um, about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days, seven of them are massive selling days. And even if you look at this bar, there's nothing buying about this at all. The buyers tried to push up and the sellers just took over. No problem. That's what that's what these webinars are for, Dean. Um, for asking those questions and asking anything. I wish people would ask more questions. NZD JPY. Uh, and we can see here that NZD is 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 much stronger than JPY. We've had that sort of double bottom. It wasn't something that was on my radar. Why? Because it, it it broke that low. Broke that low. Yes, again, this is not a this is this is another example of a Dean here. Look body is above the bar look we're on the wick and then look the body the open and close is actually sitting on it and this one is still valid okay touches this one touches this one doesn't but i cast that as still a bounce breaks it bounce breaks bounce bounce break I class that as a bounce 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 so unfortunately there's no clear, hard and rules fast over the likes of these. It's the line of best fit, what suits us best, where is the best area we can we can see and potentially trade off of. And this was a decent off trade. Um, and it looks like it's about a one to one, but I wouldn't have taken it because of that lower low. NZD CADs, and we still need that pullback. Still want that pullback. Still want that to come into, into an area. I'm actually going to pull that one up a little bit because the levels have got a little bit closer to here. So it looks much better. One, two, three, four touches. So rather than rather than coming back to that blue line, probability of becoming the blue line is much, is much less now. I'd expect it to sort of come back to here. If it comes back to here, then we have some sort of a pop to the upside. But the question is, is has CADS got two selling bars in it at the moment? And then look at ends of ECHF, absolutely sideways. There was a potential buy there, but if you bought that, absolutely crazy. Um, no, look at it. It's a it's a descending triangle at the minute and we're going to get a pop one way or the other and as a trader i probably expect this to pop to the downside if i'm if i'm being honest I'd probably expect that to happen. Even though that level has bounced once, twice, three times, four times. You could argue that look, the lows are getting, the highs are getting lower. And look, the lows are actually getting lower as well. So one, two, three. So that's what indicates that this is going down. The overall trend is also down. Now that can be wrong. Absolutely. It would be completely wrong with that. And then it turns around and it pops up. But as a trader, look, there's a low, gets lower, and then there's another lower. Yes, there's not massive lows in it, but it's still indicating down. The highs, lower high, lower high, and then a potential lower high there as well. Silver, no coincidence, this is now kicked off to the upside, is there? Absolutely zero coincidence. Which dollar the way it is, You'd expect that to come up and hit around this level here and um, before we get any sort of resistance. So that's the next level for me. 
there and this is a pretty clean level you've had one two three touches on that so you'd expect this now to continue going to that upside is there anything you can trade on this to 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 get that upside um nothing safely at the minute no you want you want that sort of to come back to there and look we've a couple of touches here and a touch there so you want that to come back to that level there and then potentially take off so you want it to come down to there right there comes back to there that's where we're looking for it to to go but that is just a four hour level is it a strongest sword in the world absolutely not but there is a four hour level there bounce 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 look for it to retest and then expect more momentum to the upside um daily so a little bit surprised i haven't seen more upside on this if i'm being honest uh i wouldn't expect to see much more upside on this so we have sort of two doji bars there or an engulfing bar but there, there are two indecision bars here at the moment which is strange to say the least. Uh, I'd like to see that come back to here. And if that come back to there, I'll be expecting the next wave of buyers to pop in here. Now, if you don't think it's going to come back here, you could look at this and say, Henry, there's a, a range here going on, which there is. Um, I'm looking to trade that range as a breakout. And if you think there's more momentum to the upside, that's what you could be looking at. Yeah, doji bars mean that there's there's they're unsure. It could go up, it could go down. Overall, you'd expect it to go with the overall momentum. And the overall momentum over the last what couple of days in the fifth of so the last 10 days is upwards. So you'd actually expect it to continue going in that momentum. So that's where you'd expect that to go. But again, we looked at this momentum here and we tried to break out to the downside and the breakout was exactly as we suspected. Just the stop loss here was just too big. That was all. But is this a great area? No, you're looking for a breakout. And I don't know what anyone watched Ben and Ben stuff with a breakout. He put the volume on here. And for a breakout to be a true breakout, you'd want to see the volume spike here as well by about 50% over the last couple of bars. So you want the volume to spike out as well as this. Uh, statistically speaking, if you don't get volume pumped and the breakout at the same time, it's a fake out more than a breakout. So ideally, we want that to come back to here. So that's a dollar index. We want to come back to this level, hit this level, and then go again. But look at that for a momentum change. Down to the low, that's 4% of a move against dollar, which is pretty substantial. And that's pretty substantial across the world. Uh, before I go on to... Uh, in this is, I'm just going to have a quick look at crypto here because crypto has had a little bit of a little bit of movement. And let's have a quick look at XRP. So XRP have won their case against the SEC. So there is a hundred and three percent move on this. So anyone, anyone that took that, well done. There's a huge, sort of huge um, jump on that. Now, the question is, do we do we expect this to continue? My honest opinion? No. My honest opinion, no. I know that's a little bit pessimistic here, but they have won the case. Uh, 
And I'd sort of, I, I look honestly, I'd expect it to come back into this, this sort of range here. I'd expect it to come back down to so somewhere around here. And I understand that XRP is a little bit different to the likes of, the likes of Bitcoin and XRP don't like the, to follow what Bitcoin is doing. But that was when it first came out. That was when it didn't have all these troubles. That wasn't when, you know what I mean, people sort of lost a little bit of faith in it. Now, again, it can reclaim that glory again, but people have had to sit in it for a long time to go through all this crap. Is there a bull run on crypto at the minute? No, it's it's had a little bit of a bull run. It's got up to the uh, Bitcoin, it's got up to the 30 grand and it's, it just stood there. Well, see, Cassie, I, I'd say a lot of people are still sitting on it, but again, if you believed in like these cryptocurrencies, you should have been buying in dollar cost averaging in when it was when it was going through all this court case. Or even potentially after this spike here. When I come back to here, this is one that we did talk about. I said there was three levels to potentially buy here. This is the ceiling. This is the level here we can buy, or this one here. It came back and touched it. No, 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 I understand. I understand, Cassie. I'm just saying. I'm just. I'm just saying. Right, Bitcoin. So, I did have a. Well, I was chatting to one of my clients here of having a limit order here at the twenty nine thousand. So. I didn't quite trigger it at this particular point. Then it popped up the same day that that XRP popped up, but then straight away we had a sell off again. This consolidation here, the longer this consolidation goes on, the more sort of downside I expect to see. I expect to see. Historically, when we get these, these sideways movements, we actually get a, a sell off. And then the buyers take off. Well, technically, technically, we're in a bull run at the minute. Technically. Technically, this is still a bull run. But I'd expect, I'd expect a little more of a sell-off and then go again. I'd like it to potentially come down to here, the 27,000 area. So went back to that area. I don't want to come back down to 25,000. Come back to there. And then the next wave of buyers, that'd be sort of, that'd be, that'd be the ideal scenario. But let's see. It seems to be holding at 30, at that 31,000 area. There seems to be a lot of pressure to sell at that point. But if we do get a, a big buying bar here, There'd be an awful lot of, of sellers stop loss triggers, or there'd be a lot of a lot of people who are buying the CFD that they now have to, uh, have to start buying it to cover. So um Cardana ADA again, we had that big spike, but again, I expect that to sort of come back into this here. Nothing really has changed other than other than XRP within the court case. Again, nothing really has changed. I see it all over the internet. Um, everyone praising everyone for holding on to ABA and stuff like that, and your XRP and stuff, and the uh, that little spike there. But if you jumped out of that, brilliant. You jumped out. If you took profit, absolutely amazing. But remember, with these bull runs, we have to take profit at some particular point. So you have to make a decision 
that if it's 100% up, do you take a profit? Do you honestly think in this bull run is going to continue? Are we going to come back and get it at a cheaper price? And that's that's the that's the thing with trading. You have to be able to take profit on stuff. Um, Ethereum is slowly edging up. It's one of the it's one of the cryptocurrencies that is that is slowly edging up. It's not it's not massively taken it's not massively taken the world by storm, but it is slowly edging up. Matic finally broke that sort of trend to the downside. And it'll be interesting to see will it hold here. But again, I, I just don't expect it to hold. There may be a sort of a buy again here at a much lower rate. Litecoin, very, very sideways. Very, very sideways. Comes back to here, we'll probably see some sort of bounce again. Solana eventually sort of stemmed the bleeding a little bit. Anyone who's in Solana, you're dying at the minute. But again, I expect that to come back down to here as well. Other than the court case being win won, there's absolutely nothing extra coming out on the likes of these. Yes, we have halvings. Yes, we have all that sort of stuff coming up. So make sure you're aware of those dates. Those dates you penciled in your calendar about a week in advance. So that means then if you want to go into these, that you have it scheduled in your calendar to pop up as a calendar reminder beforehand. And BNB, Open Cyrus. So what is having? Having is where, to, to, I suppose the easiest way to explain having is when they cut the amount of hashes that can be put on the on the the, the, the blockchain. Okay, which means theoretically it just makes it more expensive for people to mine cryptocurrencies, which means it then makes less of the cryptocurrency, which means then it gives more value. So that's what that's what the sort of the halving is. Um, but I'm, I'm being very crude with how I'm how I'm explaining it. So I have to stick it into Google, have a quick read of it. Um, and that would be the very simplistic way of, of explaining it. If anyone can explain any better, stick it up there. But that'd be that's the gist of it. Um, Nasdaq. So on to the schedule again. Nasdaq has made higher highs. We have had a high test bar there. So that is that is something that's that is something that is telling us that we'll see sellers jumping in here again. But the problem is, is every time we're expecting sellers, it continues to go. Um, I don't know. I don't know whether you you noticed that, and you would have looked at your portfolio. But it's the first time in nearly a year my portfolio is now in green. I'm like, what the fuck? I even called the missus and I go, "Hey, babe, come here, quick, have a look at this now." Because <laughs> when I started going on with her, it was. I think it was about eight grand down at one stage. And she's like, Henry, what are you doing? Look, you've lost eight grand. Uh, she doesn't believe, she doesn't believe in investing. So yeah, so it was it was it was nice to see that back up in a bit of in a bit of positive. So I just want this to continue going. But again, what we need a pullback. We need a pullback, whether it's to here, whether it's back to here, uh, and then if it comes back to there, we're looking to buy again. Would I be looking to short this at the moment? Well, there is there is there is a nice level of that look. If you pop that in there, 
that previous high here bouncing off here again the only problem is is that is that bar too big what happens if it continues going tomorrow it's far easier to go with the trend and more profitable with the trend than it is against the trend look see this one we barely got a one to one out of it before it went so yes there are there are shorts in here yes there are short-term plays but would i be looking to take it probably not and if i did you would literally hit the one-to-one -one right on that floor mark so there is a potential trade there um, s and p S&P is a very similar level to the NASDAQ, but the S&P actually bounces off of here as well. So there's one, two touches on this, whereas the NASDAQ only had one touch. And again, look, we're back, we're back into that there. And if I was in this trade, my stop loss would literally be there, literally there. Pretty sure it'll be stopped out on the open unless it opens and then starts going up. But I understand my take problems there, but I'll be moving my stop loss to here um, to bank that in. And at that particular scenario, you'd be banking in 1.2, just say 2.5, 1.25 on that particular trade because we haven't quite hit the 1 to 1 or the 1.7. We haven't quite hit the target on that. Even though we sat through this, I'll be looking to bank in my 1.25 on that. Uh, is there a potential short on this as well? Absolutely. There's a short on this, the same as there was on the NASDAQ. Um, entry there. Stop loss goes there. And I'm going to stick a three to one on this one and see how that plays out because we, we we do want a decent pullback. We do want it. Whether we'll get it or not is a different matter. You'd expect us to get it. And the Dow. Um, it is above the bar slightly. If you look at it there, there's the bar and my stop loss is there. Now, ideally, your stop loss should be there. Ideally, it should be there. But again, it depends on, on how depends on how risk to reward you are. If you're going for a one-to-one, -one, absolutely stick your stop loss there. If you want to be greedy. Stick your stop loss there, and it means then the risk to reward is much greater. So it depends on it depends on how greedy you want to be. Hence why I put that there. And the Dow, the Dow is the one with the strong level. If we look at it. Historically here, there's not a whole lot going on. We have one touch here. So historically, not massive. But if we come over here into recent history, bounce once. And this is class as a bounce because the open and close is down here. That's two. This is class as a bounce is three. This is a bounce is four. This is a bounce is five. And it's now touching it again. So. Are we expecting a sell-off? If we're expecting a sell-off, there's a couple of ways we can trade this. Now, one, you can put a short here. Stop loss above it. And back down to there is a 1.75 to 1, okay, which is a nice, respectable trade. Absolutely nice, respectable trade. Probably, probably the trade that's there. Do we sometimes short 
bullish trend zana yes we do absolutely it's just we haven't we haven't gone through that yet with the we haven't gone through that yet with the um, which we're training okay uh, can you stick a stochastic or rsi are you talking about the dow or are you talking about something else um tyson i'm just seeing the message yeah I will in a second i want to just want to go through this first but if we look at this and i apologize guys i'm a little bit of a cold so if you me sniffling and i do apologize um so if we if we look at this here we do have a trade to the downside we have on here but also if you drop to the four hour there's also a trade there there's also a trade there to the downside which gives us a far greater risk to reward so there's our three to one now on this now the problem with this is is that we have a much smaller stop loss so there's a high probability you get triggered in and then triggered out absolutely there's a high probability of this coming down and then triggering you out and then coming down like this okay there's a huge probability of that happening and that is mighty frustrating when it does but we do have we do have a double top here as well so let's have a quick look at stochastic And if we look at a stochastic here, we have a double top, which is the same height. And if we look at a stochastic here, it's slightly lower, isn't it? It's slightly lower. The only question is now is will it continue to drop? We have the crossover down here, which I would have liked to have seen that over up here still, but the crossover has dropped down massively. Well, what this 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 going slightly down, it actually should be slightly higher there. So that's where it is. So what that tells us is that the momentum or the amount of buyers that are buying here is not as much as here. So potential momentum is running out. So this is called divergence. So we have these two going up are the same height. And this one here is actually disagreeing. So it's in divergence. So generally, when we say that, there's a, a potential reversal. Now, the problem is, is how far this reversal happens, no one knows. So there is divergence there. Now, if we pop up onto the daily chart, there's no real divergence. They're the same height on the daily chart. But on the four hour, yes, there is. UK 100s. We have really nicely come up with that level. Really nicely. One, two, three, four, five, six touches on that. I know on this short here, we were triggered out and then it went. Question is now, is that valid? Might take profit will be there on the open and the close of that. So there's a 1.61 on this one. Looks like a pretty decent trade. At this moment, we also have a break and retest here. So bounce, bounce, this double bottom, it's broken, retested here. So we also have a little bit of support and resistance across these three here as well. The Germans, again, double top. Is there a short here on this? I'll actually guess uh, once the casting out again. 
do we have the take the stop loss just above this one here or is the stop loss up here and again it comes down to how confident you are of this hitting and then you have to look at this and go well is it going to drop through this level it did once but it had one two three four five six touches here before it broke so do I want my take profit outside there? If the answer is no, then we need to drop this down a little bit and have our take profit in there. And at that particular point, it'd be a 1.6 to 1. And um, let me have a look at the stochastic. And we actually have massive divergence there, but it's divergence in the wrong direction. We have divergence going up where we have this one here. So we want this going in the opposite direction, but there is divergence. It's just a matter of, do you think the market has enough sellers in it for this to continue going down? French CAC, again, not sitting at that level as well. But if the sellers come in, you'd expect it to gap. And the lightning strike means that there's news coming up. So there's news coming up on that particular, on that particular index. China, um, we haven't quite hit our target on China. If I'm being honest, I'd probably be moving my stop loss up inside break even on this one. Uh, and then seeing whether it'll run or not. But I expect it to come the whole way back down to here again, if I'm being honest. Aussie 200. We've sort of come up into this sort of area here. Uh, the question is, is whether it'll hit this level. If it hits this level, I'd be happy to short it. But we wanted to hit this level here and then drop. Didn't it broke through? Broke through it, closed above. So I wanted to hit here. And if it hits here, then I'll be looking to short that. It'll be like one, two, three, four, and this will be the fifth touch. Japan to do five. Uh, Japan is back at break even. Anyone took that. So to now, whether you, if you have no confidence in the market anymore, you close your position. If not, then just let it run, let us see where it goes. So oil has bounced off that level there that we talked about there and there, and it hit that level and completely turned around. So now we're expecting this to come down as far as here. Is there a short on this? Yes, there is, absolutely. But the problem is, is, is the risk to reward good enough to be shorting that? We are back to that sort of soft level. And it'll be interesting to see if you get a break and retest on a smaller time frame, that would probably be a much better entry to the downside. If it breaks here, retest, then there'll be more downside on this. And lastly, the cycle on the four hour looks decent. I can imagine um, I assume you mean to the upside. Absolutely, it does. It's just a matter of how many sellers are here. You could look at this, the upside entry there, stop loss here, then pop to the upside. When it breaks and retest, I'd expect it to sort of come down here. But again, like Tyson pointed out, this could be uh, the continuation of that move, come down to here at this level here, entry above that, stop loss below, and then go from there.
Absolutely. That is that is valid. Take profit there. And that'll be 1.44. And one of those would be correct. Let's see. Let's see how it gets on. Or so both of them would be wrong. Triggered in, triggered out of one, and then eventually triggered out of the other. Natural gas. So we're looking at this as a break and then retest, and it did come down. And we are slowly heading down towards towards this floor. Yes, we do have a sort of an area that it keeps bouncing off. And then as you can see, it's hit this floor and bounced up. And would I be moving my stop loss yet? No, it's to where we are now, it's only half a percent. The maximum I went down was 6.5, so 69. So not, not there yet. Um, let it come down if it breaks. Here, this floor and closes down below it, makes a lower low here. Then, yes, we could move our stop loss inside break even, but at this present moment in time, not yet. So, Gary, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. I understand I ran over a little bit, but we added in a bit of crypto there for a change. But thanks, everyone. Hope you all have a lovely evening, and I will speak to you all on Wednesday. Thank you. Bye bye.